broke, unemployed, I was starting to slouch. I was sleeping in the basement on my mama's new couch. That's when I heard it all, a chance to skirt it all. A money like my last girl. Completely virtual. Got the top graphic cards, got a power supply. A microprocessor, a motherboard, a tower and drive. I put the RAM in the RAM slot, drive in the larger bay. Topped it off two fans. Like a Chargers game. Price back to 30, I missed out, I fear. Crudely assemble a rig like a BP engineer. My friends and family smile and smirk and all make fun of me. But I'm going to make them eat their words because I'm going to be a Bitcoin billionaire. Spending money like I don't care. Flash drives in the underwear. Now that I'm a Bitcoin billionaire. The cash was never ending. Yo, I'm scaling, fun and rowdy. I was spending like a seven on a scale from one to Saudi. Call it mad banking. All night and all weekend, my rig is out franking. Grabs what it can while you sleeping. Just try outspending me. You'll see I'm on a mission. Drop more Satoshis than a clumsy Japanese obstetrician. But I ain't open to splits. Don't care if it's best or not. Opposing forks like a Chinese restaurant. I went from geek to chic, from basic to ASIC. I went from basement squatting to yachting, from basin to basin. Went from no friends and depression to peer-to-peer -peer legend. More contrasting language to establish the impression I'm a Bitcoin billionaire. Spending money like I don't care. Then one day there was a solar flare. Huh. I was a Bitcoin billionaire, spending money like I don't care. Now I just pawn my underwear, used to be a Bitcoin billionaire. Any change that you can spare? I'd settle for a Dogecoin, I'm so desperate. And we are live. Good evening, Bitcoiners from around the world. Firstly, happy holidays to you guys out in the US. Before I forget, because knowing me, I will. Um, I'm Brian, the UK Bitcoin Master. It is great to be with you all uh, this, where are we? Monday, the 6th of September, 2021. As always, the name of the game on my channel, Strong Bitcoin Hand. Run Bitcoin, buy and hold Bitcoin, get it offline, keep it onto a Trezor or whatever the hardware device of your choice is. That is what you're going to get on this show. I want to get the preliminaries out of the way, if I may. So if you're new to the channel, and I know uh, there are many new subscribers since uh, I went on BTC session show on Saturday, and you want to check that out in the notes section below, people. Um, I had an absolute blast on there with um, three or four, including Ben, um, great Bitcoiners. So check that out in the show notes. Um, but you're not going to get any financial advice here. So don't expect it. <clears throat> Do your own research. Get into the rabbit hole. Only buy what you can afford to lose. Check out my work, ukbitcoinmaster.com. That is where you're going to find all the work that I've done today. And bitcoininterviews.com, clearly where you're going to find all the interviews that I've done to date. Um, we are, I've got a several interviews lined up coming up with some great Bitcoiners. So look out for news on those. And again, they'll get added to Bitcoin interviews. And finally, for those wanting to drop a tip and you don't have to and I don't expect it, tipping.me will do you at UK Bitcoin Master. If you go there, there's a QR code. You can scan it with your Lightning wallet on your phone and you can send whatever you want. I believe one of them, either wallet of Satoshi or Moon wallet, does work. One doesn't work. But equally, it's a great way to practice sending a few Satoshis, 100 Satoshis, a penny or whatever it might be, and just getting familiar with the Lightning Network. So uh, why not use that? So let's get that out of the way. OK, I want to start the show by saying something. OK, oh, oh, excuse me. I do my absolute best to bring content that uh, you guys find enjoyable and educational. I've started introducing some short video clips and talking about them, as I've said before, because what I want to do is lend credibility to what I've been banging on about for three and a bit years on my YouTube channel. Um, but you know what? Here's the thing. What I've learned in the Bitcoin space is to not trust, verify. We heard, hear that phrase all the time. So when somebody reaches out to me on Twitter in a DM 
and I open it up and I have a bit of a nice conversation with them. And that person says, and they may be watching now, and they may be the reason why I've got a thumbs down. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I've got a good idea. Um, so I they asked if there's anything they can do to help. And I said, not at the moment. All good, but thank you. Really polite. And then um, there was a bit of a thread. And I said, look, my advice t given to me by a really great Bitcoiner who's in the house with us, actually, if, you, if you've got something to share, you need to be in motion. Just go on YouTube and start sharing your stuff. You know, you might not be good to start with, but you get better over time. And that was it. I left it. The next thing, this dude, he's from the UK as well. He actually goes and slams me on Twitter, which I was totally cheesed off about. And I made that abundantly clear. But not only did, did he slam me, um, but it, it also it started getting involved Stefan Levera and Peter McCormack. Um, so all I'm saying to anybody watching this now and or in the future, if you want to DM me, great. Uh, but don't DM me, you know, sweet talk me and then go and slam me because I didn't get you straight on my show. I like to get to know someone, to know if I can trust them, to know if they're a true Bitcoiner. And that takes time. And I always say that trust, you know, takes a lifetime to build and you can lose it in a heartbeat. But I'm not going to name the person because I'm also a firm believer in the great saying from one of the great movies of 30 or 40 years ago by Sigourney Weaver in a film called Working Girl with Melanie Griffiths. Um, and that is today's junior prick could well be tomorrow's senior partner. In other words, don't burn bridges. But that person, if they've happened to tune in there watching, you'll know who you are. And I don't appreciate it. Um, so people DM me. My DMs are open. I will look and see if people want, you know, want to have a chat, etc. Um, but, you know, don't expect to jump straight on my show as a guest. I know nothing about you. I don't know anything about who you are, what you do. I could learn about that. But just be a bit sensible because I'm open to anyone and everyone, but it doesn't happen overnight. Ran over and I've got it out of the way, but I needed to say it. So very quick shout out to some of the regulars in the house. Um, who else? Who have we got? We've got Johnny Midas coming in from Malibu. Welcome to you, John. Proud Zionist Jew is in the house um, from Baltimore. I've got my lovely wife is in with us. Wilco Delamar is in the house. Matthew Underhill from the Bitcoin book is with us. Alexis Menard, welcome um, to Canada. Yorkie Bitcoiner from the north of the UK is in the house with us as well. Frosty Ashingdon, great to see you back. Elia Epping, BTC Moon. Guy, great to see you in the house. Ian Stewart's house, welcome, Ian. Great to see you as well. People, if you want a shout out, I'll always give you a shout out because I want to engage my audience and bring you guys in to my shows so that you feel value and you feel valued for your comments in my chat. So if you want to get my attention, if you just want a shout out, you can type in UK Bitcoin Master, then, hey, Brian, give me a shout out, please. I'll happily do that. Um, but you've got to type in UK Bitcoin Master so it lights up in orange as Ian Stewart's house has just done. Yorkie Bitcoin has done as well. Graham Paul's in the house. Welcome to you, Graham. I'm going to say one thing about Graham Paul without giving any OPSEC away. That is a strong Bitcoin hand, people. That is a strong dca -er. Uh, way to go, Graham Paul. OK, so let's quickly jump on over to the desktop and see what's going on. In fact, just bear with me one second and we will get there. OK, I love to show this chart because the one thing we talk about co content creators in Bitcoin is you are not a Bitcoiner until you've done a full cycle. Now, as you can see, I'm on a five year chart and I always say when you've been in Bitcoin four years, you have experienced every part of the Bitcoin cycle, the highs, the lows, the halving, the pump, the dumps. You've seen it all. OK, but if you actually look at one of the short term charts and that's where you focus all the time. Now, it still doesn't look bad, but you can be forgiven if you were to zoom in to say an hour chart and think, oh, I'm brand new to Bitcoin. What is going on here? It is crashing down. 
don't even go there, people. Do look nothing more at the five-year chart, and you'll see from this the 2017 pump. We've had the 2021 pump, the pullback. We're almost back to our all-time highs again. Bitcoin is doing what it does, and it's in a good place. And you'll be in a good place if you zoom out and you don't look at the day-to-day -day fluctuations of what's going on in Bitcoin. So that said, the video that I'm going to run today in clips, and we're going to talk about it, is from a, an, an incredible Bitcoiner. He's been in the space a long time. He's got a lot of respect uh, within the Bitcoin community. Um, he has something like 350,000 followers on Twitter. At the end of the show, his Twitter will go up into the show notes. So I would encourage you to follow him. And that is Mr. Dan Held. OK, and Dan Held has a lot of common sense things to say about Bitcoin. And this video that I'm going to run, we're going to start off and he's talking about the super cycle. Now, disclaimer, this was aired before Bitcoin had its major correction that you see uh, down here. But I think understanding what a super cycle is and what you might look for in a super cycle and what would happen in a super cycle. For those of you not 100% familiar, and I wasn't, hands up, just a regular guy that used to drive trucks for a living that is learning all about this stuff in my own time at my own pace. So let's run the video and let's see what Dan's got to say. And as always, I'll pick it apart or I'll stop it here and there and I'll interject with what I feel I need to say. Dan Held, over to you. Um, yeah, I mean, there's certain check marks that indicate that we are in a super cycle. Um, I would say institutional buy-in and corporate buy-in is a gigantic check mark. We, I hypothesized that Bitcoin is gold 2.0 back in, in 2012, and that's why I've been hodling this whole time. The entire world, including central banks, investment banks, hedge funds, all the institutions, they now believe Bitcoin is gold 2.0. That's an incredible moment. These aren't a bunch of young folks at the company. These are 65-year-old dudes, 70-year-old dudes saying this. And for them to say this, Bitcoin is now being globally recognized as a gold 2.0. That's a giant check mark. And we may have had the correction, but it is still a giant check mark. Why? Because it means P Bitcoin is on their radar. Now, of course, they will probably park themselves back onto the sidelines for a while and they'll watch the price. Uh, maybe they're waiting for the price to drop so they can buy in, but maybe that's not now going to happen or maybe they have to the price has to hit a certain threshold before the institution the institutions start to pile in that's a giant mm -hmm. check mark for the super cycle theory because now we have a new market participant the institutions the institutions aren't just important this is what a lot of bitcoiners don't realize they're not just important because of how much money they have and how big they are in terms of like you know how much capital that they manage and that being deployed into bitcoin it's reflexive Institutions buying Bitcoin, retail buys Bitcoin because institutions have bought Bitcoin because they still trust institutions. Mm -hmm. Remember, most people out there aren't Bitcoiners. They haven't been orange pilled. They still mm -hmm. trust these legacy institutions. And when these legacy institutions buy Bitcoin, then they go, OK, now I'm going to buy it. Uh, Bitcoin Meister, a.k.a. Proud Zionist Jew, a.k.a. Adam, Mus Adam Meister, who's in the house, um, he taught me, you know, um, <laughs> once they come in, you know, I've completely lost my train of thought. Back to Dan, sorry. And so that's where, you know, super cycle really comes it's into life. effect is institutions buy it. Retail goes, I should buy it because of institutions buying it. And that's a huge, huge amount of capital flowing into Bitcoin. I remember now and I wanted to say it. And that is that the 80 percenters still follow the institutions, the banks, and they feel the governments are going to bail them out and the governments are going to take care of them. And so what Dan's saying there is, you know, most people, the 80 percenters, they still trust and believe in the banks and the institutions. Whereas before it was just a tiny, tiny retail market. So I think that alone is is one of the big check marks for the super cycle theory. Um, you know, and, and that's where I think like a lot of people just discount institutions. So they're like, oh, Bitcoin's going corporate. I'm like, no, this was always Bitcoin's trajectory. If you're going to become a world reserve currency, did you think we we're all going to do it in our basements? 
<laughs> yes, in the beginning we did, but eventually it goes out and institutions adopt it and get into it. And that's really important because the libertarians out there, you know, will say, you know, screw the banks, the institutions, etc. You know, we want regular people to to go and adopt Bitcoin. But I think to take it to another level, if you want to do it in our lifetimes, you've got to have the institutions come in. That does not mean regular dudes like us can't buy, can't talk to our family, can't talk to our friends. And if we decide that we don't want the institutions to get into this because we want to get all of our friends and family into it, I think we'll die trying because the reality is uh, most people want to live on state handouts. They want the government to take care of them. They believe the job for life is going to look after them and the de their descendants for decades to come. And it just ain't happening. So, you know, in terms of the speed of adoption, we need those institutions to come into Bitcoin, in my opinion. That's just an opinion. Don't anybody beat up on me. It's just an opinion. Uh, you know, we've, we've all got an opinion. They're a bit like belly buttons. We've got one. They're totally useless, but we're all entitled to that opinion. And that's just how I feel. I think the the one element that is like a double check mark for me, because like the institutions, cool. Like that's gold 2.0 narrative has been bought in at the at the widest level possible. That creates reflexivity with uh, retail traders. But, you know, to, <laughs> to see corporates come in, that was a surprise to me. I actually didn't think that was going to happen. And that even wasn't really even a consideration for me. That to me is like a double check mark of like, holy shit. <laughs> if I think uh, ARK invested in an analysis where they said if 10% of all U.S. corporate treasuries were put into Bitcoin, Bitcoin's price would be $400,000 of Bitcoin. Okay. 10% of just the US's corporate treasuries. Now, I know the US currently is the biggest, you know, superpower in the world. Uh, you know, innovation, go to the US, a land of the free land of opportunity, all, all that stuff. But here's the thing, he was just talking about 10% of the US. What about 10% of the world? What is then going to happen if he's talking about the 10% of the US, you know, hitting Bitcoin hitting 400,000? So I don't make wild predictions on my show. But if you look at facts, if you look at cold, hard facts, if you look at if you start to understand how much money is out there, people, there's 10 trillion, give or take, in the gold world alone. And Bitcoin's just creeping back up to the one trillion mark. So even 10x from here, 500,000 of Bitcoin, you know, and we, you know, we then match gold's market cap. That does not account for half of what Dan is just talking about there. So I want you to sort of take that in, let it marinate and ask yourself, do you need to start selling your chairs or your fishing rod or your car or your wife or your grandmother or your mother-in-law or whatever it is and buy some more sats before it's too late? Because when I'm looking over at the chart right now, I remember only a show or so ago, um, one dollar was getting you over 2,000 Satoshis. Now that same dollar is getting you 1,935 Satoshis. So let's just say all we do is double by the end of this year. That one dollar is not going to get you 2,000 anymore. It's going to get you 1,000, if that makes sense. So if, if it, you know, 4X is 5X is the amount of sats you're getting for your dollar or your pound is going down and down and down and down. So, you know, when Michael Saylor says, I go to bed, you know, at night, you know, in a, wake up in a hot sweat thinking I haven't got enough Bitcoin. So do I. So do I. Because every single sat is going to matter in this in quotes, new world. Why did I just say that phrase? I've just embarked on a journey with the audio book, um, The Sovereign Individual. And boy, is that heavy, but is it enjoyable? Am I taking stuff from it? Yes, I really am. Is it teaching me about the history of the world that I did not learn about in school because I hated school? Yes, it is. Am I finding it enlightening, enthralling and can't get enough of it? Yes, I am. Two hours in the morning listening, two hours in the evening listening, and I can't digest it fast enough. And I never believed me, Brian, the UK Bitcoin master, when I left school at 15 because I hated academia 
media would ever get to this point in my life and absolutely love digesting books about the history of the world and nation states and how they crumbled, why they crumbled. It was just absolutely fascinating. So we move on. Like that's where these numbers get really crazy where you're like, Oops. wait a second, oh. how much corporate cash is there? And then you're like, whoa, there's trillions in corporate cash. And what if they start to treat Bitcoin as gold 2.0? And so there's other participants that we haven't even really thought about. And we haven't, even, we haven't even had a central bank say they're buying Bitcoin yet or a Bitcoin ETF. There's all mm. of these bullish narratives that are sort of under the surface. And I've talked with Nathaniel Whitmore about this, which he's he kind of introduced me to narratives, I think, in a really deep way in the crypto world. I think that when we look at the like, there's like the surface of narratives that we can see today. And there's also like this, all these unseen narratives to where when we look at the future narrative path of Bitcoin, there's a bunch of crazy bullish narratives that would totally change the game. A central bank buys Bitcoin, um, $10 billion plus allocation uh, to an institution or like Apple or Google or something, right? Or like, you know, there's all these super bullish narratives that we just haven't seen yet. And folks aren't really, I don't think they're pricing that inaccurately of like, what happens, you know, the TLDR of the super cycle theory what happens when the world wakes up to Bitcoin? Like, it's not going to go in the typical path, you know, where these were basically retail retail pumps, right? Which is tiny, 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 tiny. But what happens when the whole world at once comes into Bitcoin? I, I think that's ultimately what the super cycle represents is like, this could be the moment where we have the education, we have the pipes ready, we have the macro backdrop, we have the micro backdrop. All of those are perfectly aligned for the potential for it to happen. Will it happen? I don't know, but it certainly looks like a possible outcome. So if we talk about that super cycle for a moment, um, to simplify it, it, it simply means maybe we're not going to see the halving, the huge bull run, the huge correction, and then the two years in a bear market before the next halving, then the run up, then the pullback, and then the two year uh, Bitcoin winter. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But there's a lot of indicators that, that are leaning towards the fact that once this final quarter of 2021 just goes and it's going to absolutely go, a lot of them are saying it's almost like a coiled rubber band, a coiled spring. It is going to go and it is going to shock the hell out of all of us. Maybe there will be another 20% correction or even a 50% correction. And then we're sucked into the belief that perhaps we're going back down into the bear market again. And then it does a U-turn and just goes off again because institutions, nation states, big banks come in and they none want to be left behind. So some of them dump out thinking they've hit the top and then a load more institutions pile in and off it goes to the races again. We don't know. All I know as a Bitcoiner that's been in this for four years now, over four years, and seen each year and each part of the cycle, all I know is that the 20, 20, 2017 run up to 20K, the p big pump, was pretty well retail investors, people like us, regular people that are trying to take a, a little bit out of our wages, our salary each payday and put into Bitcoin, maybe a few whales in there. But once the institutions and the banks and the nation states, one off, whatever it is, start piling into it, man, that's a different animal. And you've got to get that. When you get that, that stops you sleeping at night. That stops you that that makes you start thinking my goodness when this things go th when this thing goes what are we going to experience and i think as somebody said it's going to rip our faces off when we see what happens in this final quarter of 2021 and maybe early in 2022 which is i can't wait for i really really can't i want to give a shout out to uh, vinny rondo vinny great to have you in the house my good man thank you for saying those nice things mike MS Bit ETH has just joined us. Mike, great to have you in the house. If I haven't given you a shout out and the chat's gone up and you want a shout out, type in UK Bitcoin Master People. I'll happily give you a shout out. Okay, back to Dan Held. Yeah, I think um, that's where people are like, oh, a million dollars of Bitcoin, that seems crazy. I'm like, I don't think we've even approached, I don't even think a million dollars of Bitcoin is crazy, like eventually. 
And, and by the way, I'm talking in today's dollars too. I'm not talking about in a future inflated dollar state where tons of dollars have been printed even more so. I'm talking about current purchasing value of a million. What, yeah, what happens when <laughs> tens of trillions of dollars from these governments, what if they start to buy with, you know, they start to print and buy? It's interesting because I probably got ahead of myself, as I always do, because I like to research once I put the video together. And what I keep saying on my shows is this, but then who am I? I'm just a Bitcoiner from the UK with 600 followers. Um, so I've got no credibility, no clout out there. When you see this guy who's out there, you know, he works for Kraken, you know, one of the largest exchanges, you know, he's respected nearly 400,000 followers on Twitter. What Dan is doing is just underpinning what I'm saying and lending credibility because, and I've said this a million times before, and I'm going to say it again. All I ever do is watch podcasts, learn from them and try to replicate what they're saying on my shows. But of course, I've come to realize that because I have got a small channel, you know, I don't hold that credibility, whereas these guys do have that credibility so understand why i run these video clips um you know and, and remember that it's not like a, it's not like a linear relationship like a trillion dollars doesn't come into bitcoin and bitcoin moves up a trillion a trillion dollars comes into bitcoin and bitcoin moves up to 20 trillion you know there. like that's where i do believe that some of these super bullish long-term estimates for bitcoin or like a hal finney's original estimate that bitcoin might be worth 10 million dollars of bitcoin i think in the long term that's not too crazy to think about if all the central banks FOMO in, like if Bitcoin truly becomes a world reserve currency, that's like a very long term, very, very bullish scenario. But that's where in this, this, this current cycle, what happens if we see a couple of central banks do that? And we see the narrative propagate. It doesn't mean it's true or not, but the narrative propagate that a major central bank bought it. Again, you can't kill the rumor. There's no way to kill it. Even if you show your reserve balances, no one will believe you. No one will believe the central bank. There's no trust in central banks. Um, they've also done really shady things during 2008 and during COVID where they actually in, in the United States, there had a, there was a Freedom of Information Act disclosure that they forced with the Fed to disclose certain uh, kind of like shadow banking that they set up for these institutions during the 2008 financial crisis. So you can't stop the rumor. That's what's so wild about this is it's kind of like a virus. And it's all this virus of like everyone thinking about, well, does this other counterparty believe in Bitcoin too? That's what I think is so wild about this is like, there's no real way to stop it. There's no way to, and, and will this narrative propagate and will it, will it sink in and become a realization? Will the market price this in? I think so. And that's where it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy of like the market goes higher on that rumor. Other central banks think, oh, maybe I should buy it because this central bank did. And then they buy it. And then they, and then the central bank that was rumored to do it goes, oh shit, all the other central banks are buying it. And that's, that's how it all flows. Isn't that exciting people? Now, I'm going to say one thing before I run the last part. None of us have got a crystal ball. Dan hasn't got a crystal uh, ball. Badge Dobnik. Hey, good to see you in the house. Um, Dan hasn't got a crystal ball. Bitcoin Meister hasn't got a crystal ball. Michael Saylor hasn't got a crystal ball. None of them have. None of us know what's going to happen. All I know in terms of an asymmetric bet is you are better off stacking Bitcoin and building a pot for you and your family for generations to come on the, on the risk that 1%, you know, some black swan event might take it down, you know, on a 99% up that you can actually change your family's finances forever in the future. I just saw Mike MS Biteath. I think Mike said something that was relevant. Was it Mike? Um, that, that's the thing. I'm trying to find it in the chat. And because it's not highlighted, I can't read it out. But it was something about, yeah, at 100 million if, if it becomes a world reserve minimum. Yeah, Mike. Yes. But none of us know that, do we? So, but the point is, it is the most exciting place to be in right now in terms of living through this most incredible change in world history. And it brings me back to the audio book I'm going through, you know, the, the sovereign individual, just an incredible thing. You know, even if you're not a reader, get that book on Audible and listen to it because it's just incredible. And I'm, I'm so grateful that I'm living through this time and I'm getting to experience it. And you should be too. Last clip. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I mean, most of the people who don't like Bitcoin just dislike it because they're on the wrong side of the trade. Yep. They uh, Do they really care about energy? No, of course yep. not. Because if they were at all a shred of intellectual uh, a of honesty, they would evaluate the existing financial system. And then they would compare Bitcoin to it and go, both systems use a lot of energy. 
And that's where you realize it's not really about these FUD arguments that are like legitimate or not. It's, it's they just don't like Bitcoin. And they're coming up with a, a, a myriad of narratives to try to FUD Bitcoin, quantum computing, uh, energy FUD, governments banning it FUD. It's basically they're on the wrong side of the trade and they're just coming up with narratives to make themselves feel better. Nick Carter and I have both worked on anti-energy oh, FUD narratives. Nick Carter, I think, has to carry the torch now in terms of he's really out there. He's He's got so much energy to go fight it, all puns intended, you know, like he, he, I think he's our champion. He's our champion to fight energy FUD. Um, and the energy FUD narrative, the, the counter narrative has gotten really strong. Like I worked on proof of work as efficient back in 2018, and that was sort of like the gold standard for energy FUD fighting. And there's been iterations on that. And I think Nick's iteration and the modern iteration is the, is the most compressed narrative possible and also the best. It's, it's essentially your numbers. Like you come and FUD Bitcoin. First of all, your metrics are wrong. How you think about it's wrong, which indicates that you have great intellectual dishonesty. Um, and then we go further and we're like, wait a second. So why don't you compare this to the existing financial system? Like, why don't you criticize the existing financial system? And if they don't do that, they're dishonest. There's no mm -hmm. other way to slice, like, there's no other way to slice it. If you don't criticize the existing financial system's energy consumption, you are completely dishonest. And so you can just easily pick apart the argument where you're like, well, how about the existing financial system? Or how about your Xbox usage? You see, I love Dan Hell because he's level playing field, feet on the ground, talks a load of common sense. And it's true, isn't it? If they are going to, you know, uh, go down the road of challenging Bitcoin because it's boiling the oceans, then they need to go and do the same thing with everything that we do. Everything we do uses energy in the world. And for those that are new to this channel, go back several shows where I put a chart up that showed that out of, I believe, 600 and 160,000 terawatt hours of energy used globally every year, less than 1% is used on Bitcoin. So just keep that in mind, people. Bitcoin is, in my opinion, no financial advice, the place to be. You must do your own research and you'll only get it if you get it. Can I, you know, you can't get it from what I say. You get it when you get it. And when you get it, you know that you're so far down that rabbit hole that nobody, nothing or no black swan event is going to talk you out of your Bitcoin. And that's really important. Let's swing over to the desktop because I did find a couple of tweets that I just want to share before we wrap up that I thought were good. Bitcoin Archive. Again, hundreds of thousands of followers. No other asset combines Bitcoin's liquidity with its upside potential, says Bill Miller, a billionaire investor. There we are. Billionaires are coming out with statements like this. This is important. It's not just videos that I'm showing you. It is out there on Twitter where billionaires are coming out with these phrases, words and bits said. They who say Bitcoin wastes energy don't realize Bitcoin consumes wasted energy. Don't you think that's a really good one? So simple, but really, really so profound as well. Uh, I've got one more, I believe. Yeah, Dan Held, funny enough. Nearly 700 million transactions have been sent on the Bitcoin network. No government, bank or third party could have stopped them even if they wanted to. And that's the power of Bitcoin. And that's probably on the base layer. Never mind what's going to happen on the second layer, lightning, that is just gathering speed at the most incredible pace. And if you don't know what lightning is, start learning about lightning. You can get an app on your phone, Wallet of Satoshi, um, Moon Wallet, that's M-U-U-N, Moon Wallet. You download them. You can literally start sending Satoshis to my tipping.me address or someone you know in Bitcoin in a heartbeat. And you can send you know, 10 Satoshis and it doesn't even register as a penny or a cent. A hundred is a penny or something daft. So if you lost a penny and you did it wrong, would it matter? No, it wouldn't. Start learning to get your head around sats because it looks like they're going to be the standard going forward. You know, we're all talking about Satoshis now. One dollar doesn't get you zero, 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 Bitcoin. It gets you 1,930 something sats or Satoshis. My quote, 
that I want to finish with, and I love quotes, and I've got to thank my lovely wife for this one. She dug this out for me. Do the courageous thing now so that you can have the extraordinary thing later. That's pretty profound. When you get into Bitcoin, it is courageous because the minute you start telling anybody around you, they're going to laugh at you. They're going to scorn. They're going to talk behind your back. They're going to roll their eyes. I've experienced it all and I currently experience it all. But one of my bios on one of my social media says they laughed at me and ridiculed me in 2017 when I raved about Bitcoin but they're not laughing anymore. And the old adage kicks in, he who laughs last will laugh the longest. So be courageous, people. Buy your Bitcoin, get it onto your trezor, do nothing with it, bar ensure it's secure. Tell others, ignore them laughing, rolling their eyes, doing all those things, because there will come a time where you most definitely will have that last laugh. So to that dude that gave me a thumb down at the start of the show, way to go. Thanks for the thumb down. Do I look bothered? No, not at all. If you're childish enough to leave that, that's up to you. For those of you that support me and understand where I'm coming from, I can't do TA. I don't talk about charts. I don't make price predictions. I'm just a regular Bitcoiner who wants to share his enthusiasm with others. And it's great that so many of you want to come to the show and spend your time in my chat. I, I'm humbled by it. I really am. But I'm going to ask you all a favour. Please tweet it out if you're on Twitter. Please share it out. Uh, maybe share the link with four or five of your friends. Please go back into the show afterwards and underneath the video, click in the comments and leave a short comment because it helps YouTube's algorithm keep it visible for longer. That way we can find more noobs or more noobs can find this channel. Here's what I'm going to leave you with. Right now, Bitcoin's at whatever it is, 50,000. I haven't looked since we went on air, but about 50,000-ish. Okay. And you know what? It's all quiet out there. There's no FOMO going on. You haven't seen anything yet, people. I lived through the FOMO of 2017. And when that happens, it goes absolutely bananas. It's all quiet out there on social media. So when the, when the FOMO kicks in, when the avalanche comes, I want loads of noobs to find my channel so I can hopefully help as many of them as I possibly can not go down the crap coin route and end up losing their money and learn why they need to come in and stack their money in Bitcoin. So people, thanks for being on the call. I'm going to be back on the call, on the show. I'm going to be back on uh, Thursday, 6 p.m. London. As always, I'll be ranting about Bitcoin, possibly if I haven't have, a, have another video for you all. Um, do check out the show that I was on, BTC Sessions, Why Are We Bullish, um, last Saturday. I really loved it. There were some great Bitcoiners on there, and I've got some great Bitcoin interviews coming up, um, already booked in for October. One coming up in a week or so from now. You won't want to miss that one, because this one is the sort of guy that will challenge people like Peter Schiff and the live and the like in live debates. So you don't want to be missing that one. And I will be announcing that one on, hang on, six. Yes, on Thursday's show, it's going to be next Monday. So come and join me. I'm out of here, people. Thanks for sharing your time with me. I'll leave you with my social media links. See ya.